In this video, we will be going over the ideal gas law. Now, as was mentioned in the previous video, the ideal gas law is born out of the combined gas law, where we are looking at every single parameter that can be used to describe a gas and recognizing that when we put these parameters in their proper context, the ratio of products leads to a constant value. And we call that constant value R, the universal gas constant. Now, the universal gas constant comes in a number of different forms, and we've talked a little bit about those already. Um, but the most common way that we see the, com the ideal gas law arranged is not like this, PV, is equal, PV over NT is equal to R. We often see it rearranged into this form, PV, that is pressure times volume, is equal to NRT, that is the number of moles of the gas, multiplied by this universal gas constant, multiplied by the absolute temperature in degrees Kelvin. And this is gonna be a really important equation for us because we can use it not so much to describe when gases are changing conditions, but rather if we know certain parameters about a gas, we can use this equation to figure out other parameters of the gas. So if I know the pressure and volume and temperature of a gas, I can use that to calculate and figure out the number of moles of gas present without actually having to measure the mass of the gas or anything like that. So really kind of important, and we'll see that this has a lot of utility in several different types of calculations. In particular, uh, as we'll see in a future video, uh, stoichiometry type of, of calculations where we look at things that are happening in the gas phase and how they are um, changing um, over time uh, as the reaction proceeds. Now let's talk a little bit about that universal gas constant R. Now there are a number of different versions of the universal gas constant. In the SI system um, we see um, it used in this way where we have pascals or kilopascals. Now the problem with these is that again pascals and kilopascals are, are ridiculously small units. But uh, where is more commonly for us to use is if we can use our conversions between our pressure units and each other we can take this value and put it into terms that are a lot easier for us to know. And these two values for the universal gas constant, one that uses mil, uh, excuse me, atmospheres, uh, 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole K, um, and then this one, liters times millimeters of mercury per mole K, um, which we also will see um, TOR, thrown into this in place of the millimeters of mercury. These are our most common universal gas constants. And notice this part, the liters and the mole K, kind of doesn't change very much from unit to unit. Um, and so really the value of R that we use is dictated by our pressure unit first and foremost. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of some calculations that we can do with the ideal gas law and this universal gas constant. Now the first one is actually a bit of a trick. Um, how many moles of gas are in a four liter container at STP? You could use the ideal gas law to solve this problem. But if you think back to Avogadro's law, one of the very simple things that was brought out of Avogadro's law is that one mole of gas at STP is equal to 22.4 liters. So if I know that, and I know my Avogadro's law, I don't actually need to use the ideal gas law in this case. I can just take my 4.0 liters of gas and just do a dimensional analysis, um, unit conversion, 22.4 liters of gas, is equal to one mole of gas. My liters of gas cancel. 
all I need to do, 4 divided by 22.4 gives me to two significant figures, 0 0.18. moles of gas. We don't know what the gas is, but it doesn't matter because again, the beauty of Avogadro's law says that this relationship holds for any gas so long as that gas is at standard temperature and pressure. Now let's look into a, uh, an example that actually does use the ideal gas law. What is the pressure of a four moles of methane in a 12.3 liter container at, two, at 25 degrees Celsius. So for this, we are gonna need to use the ideal gas law, PV is equal to NRT. Our pressure value, we don't know. Um, our volume is 12.3 liters. We have 4.0 moles of gas. Um, our R value, since we're not told which pressure unit we're looking for, we can technically choose any one that we want. Um, for the sake of, of uh, argument here, I'm just gonna choose 62.36 liters times uh, tor divided by moles times Kelvin. And then 25 degrees Celsius is 298 Kelvin. So I need to get pressure by itself. So I'm going to divide each side by 12.3 liters. And if I set up my algebra correctly, my 12.3 liters cancels on this side and all of my other units should cancel other than my pressure unit of Tor, which is what we're looking for. My liters cancel because I've got liters in the universal gas constant in the numerator and liters down here in the denominator. I've got moles in the denominator of the universal gas constant and the numerator of my uh, fraction. I've got Kelvin in the numerator of the fraction and in the denominator of the gas constant. So all that's left as far as units are concerned are Tor. So 4.0 times 62.36 times 298 divided by 12.3 and to uh, two significant figures because of the moles, um, I'm gonna get a pressure unit here. Um, pressure is equal to 6,000 uh, tor, um, which to be more precise, um, with our significant figures, we should put that in scientific notation. 6.0 times 10 to the third tor. Now, like I said, you could have done this in atmospheres. You could have done this a number of different ways. This was just the way to do it. That was, um, using tor or millimeters of mercury. Uh, you just need to switch out the gas constant to do it in atmospheres. Use uh, 0 0.08206 uh, liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin if you wanted um, atmospheres here. Uh, the last example we're going to look at is um, a little bit different. Um, instead of using the ideal gas law just to figure out a parameter, we're going to actually use it to solve a problem. And you actually will do a, a problem like this in lab. Uh, um, somewhere along the line here, you have a mass of a gas, 0.281 grams of a sample. You know how much space it takes up. You know what temperature you collected it at. You know the pressure that you collected it at. The question is calculate the molar mass. Now to do a molar mass, you need a mass of gas and the number of moles of that gas. Well, the mass of gas we already have, 0.281 grams. It's a matter of figuring out the number of moles. And that's where the ideal gas law comes in. PV is equal to NRT. Well, in this case, we're trying to find N. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, maneuvering. Uh, we're going to divide each side by RT 
to get n by itself. And so rearranged PV over RT is going to be equal to n. And so that's where we're going to input our values to, to try to get them to, to work here to solve the rest of this. So our pressure is 754 torr. Our volume point is 127 milliliters. We need to turn that into liters. So 127 divided by 1,000 is 0.127 liters divided by R. Since our, R val since our pressure is in torr, we need to use 62.36 um, liters times torr divided by moles times Kelvin. And our um, temperature, 98 degrees Celsius, um, 98 plus 273 gives us 371 Kelvin. And so once again, Checking that make sure everything kind of cancels out. Tor cancel. Leaders cancel. I've got Kelvin in the numerator of this denominator and Kelvin in the denominator of this denominator. Uh, so those cancel out as well. What I'm left with as far as units is one over one over moles. You may remember that the reciprocal of a reciprocal is just what we had in that denominator as itself. So that means that we're going to end up with moles as our unit in total. So all of this gives us N. And if we do the calculations, 754 multiplied by 0.127 divided by 62.36, divided by 371, we get uh, to three significant figures, um, 0 0.00414 moles of this gas. The molar mass of the gas then, um, We have 0 0.281 grams of this gas. We have 0 0.00414 moles of this gas. So putting that all together now, 0 0.281 divided by 0 0.00414. We get to three significant figures, 67.9 grams per mole as our molar mass. And so this is an example of one of the ways that we can manipulate the ideal gas law to help us to solve real problems in a laboratory situation. Um, like figuring out what the molar mass of an unknown gas is to help us to characterize that gas. So our next set of videos are going to be in a similar kind of vein to this, where we're going to start using the ideal gas law to solve other kinds of laboratory-based problems, looking at things like density of gases, um, molar masses of gases from experimental data, or even using gas phase stoichiometry and the ideal gas law to help us to do reactions that involve gases, whereas before we had to weigh them. So until then, have a good day.